Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun and I'm out in the Wyoming wilderness, Wyoming, where the world is your range. And today I'm going to talk to you about the new Mete, M-E-T-E, -E, it's pronounced Mete. You say, well that looks like the TP9, right? Well, that's because it's made by Canik, by Canik USA, and it's based upon the TP9. The Mete has several features on it that are an improvement over the TP9 that you may have known in the past. They redesigned the trigger guard just a little bit. I, they say that they made it better. Is it better? I don't know, but uh, try it and find out. It's got a nice cut underneath here for your finger. They redesigned the beaver tail a little bit to give you a bit of a higher grip. Now this frame comes with three interchangeable back straps like many pistols do now, a small, medium, and a large. This one is the medium. I felt like it fit my hand better uh, after trying it out. They have very aggressive grip stippling right here on the sides and then of course in the front. Obviously you've got your typical, your accessory rail, which you would expect. Now up on top on the slide, this is a Cerakoted slide. You've got the cocking serrations in the, in the front and in the rear. The front sight and the rear sight are dovetailed in. Unlike the original model where you either liked the sights or you didn't and that was it. And then later on they decided to dovetail them. Now what you'll notice right here is I have installed a shield sight mini reflex optic and the original pistols, some of the original pistols from Canik that were optic ready, well, the plate included the rear sight. So when you took the uh, plate off and put a red dot sight on, you didn't have a rear sight anymore. Well, what they've done is they've changed that. So this is cut for the mini red dots, like the shield sight or the RMRCC. And I believe there's also a hollow sun model that has the same footprint. So if you're into these little mini shield sights or the new RMR CC or whatever, this will fit it. And it comes with two different plates to install it and all the hardware that you need. Now right here, what they've done with the rear sight, if you look closely, you'll notice that they angled it. They angled it a little bit. So in an emergency, if you had to one hand rack your gun, you could do so. Now, of course, this has a red dot sight on it, but I could rack the red dot on my belt or rack the red dot on my holster if I needed to. What else is unique about this gun? Well, if you look right here where my fingers are real close on both sides, well, what I thought was what they put that there so when I take my finger off the trigger, I can reach up and I can feel the grippy part, right? And I know my finger is nice and far up off the trigger. Well, what these are is actually index points or grip points for the holster. So when I drop this thing in the holster, these little points right here are making contact with the side for what they call a better holster fit. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to point out about this gun is a unique feature. And this comes from the fact that these guns, these guns are in use by militaries overseas, not just American civilians but militaries overseas are using these guns. And one of the things that they had to do was torture test them. And they had to do a sand dirt test. So what they did, if you look real close right here to the back plate, now if you looked at your Glock or your, sh your shield, your SIG, uh, your Smith & Wesson, there's normally a hole right there so that this can slide over the ejectors. Well, what they've done here is they've removed that because that's one point that eliminates or a way that they can eliminate dust or dirt getting into the slide. So when you need to disassemble this gun, I would first clear it, all right, point it in a safe direction, click, pull it back about a quarter inch or a half inch, let it ride forward, let it ride forward, and then you lift it straight up off. You don't slide it all the way. Then when you wanna put it back on, you just set it down on top of the slide, pull it back, and you're good to go. Uh, the, the gun has the famously good, excellent uh, Canik factory trigger. This trigger is very good. If you've ever used a Canik, you know the Canik triggers are really good. 
This has a dual uh, slide lock or slide release, but it, it's, it's actually, it sits very close against the frame so it doesn't get in your way. And, and I like that. I don't really need, I don't need a dual slide lock, but when they put it back close to the frame, it doesn't get in the way. It has a loaded chamber indicator as you'd expect and all the other good stuff. So this is the Canic Mete. This is the SFT model. It is an improved version of the TP9. They put some very small but important improvements on the original gun, and I think you guys are gonna be really happy with it. I'm gonna shoot the ever-living crap out of this gun and test it, and maybe I'll torture it a little bit, and then we'll let you know. This is the Mete SFT from Canic USA. Actually, has been my third session out at the range, out in the field, out in the wilderness with the uh, Mete SFT pistol. Uh, as you can see, we dropped it, we buried it. I shot it two-handed, shot it single-handed right, single-handed left. Did tons of holster drills. I fired uh, numerous different kinds of ammunition from Black Hills, CCI, Federal, Hornady, and even the. Uh, the Red Army Standard from Century, the steel case stuff, lots of different ammunition, and it fed and cycled all of it, zero flaws. About 300 rounds or so into this testing, I've had zero malfunctions, even after burying it, dropping it, doing all that stuff. Oh, and yes, the red dot is still working just fine, even after being dropped and buried and all that good stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, this is one tough pistol. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it two thumbs up. So I am Paul Markle from Student of the Gun. I'll talk to you again real soon. <laughs>